Well, Clay Thompson's having his best year in maybe six. He is absolutely great. Jordan Poole, DiVincenzo, uh, Steph Curry had 50 against the Clippers. So it's a team that's guard heavy. And if things don't work out with the loss, with the movement of Wiseman and Wiggins, they're a small team yes. and they're not going to be as good defensively. So, uh, you know, I've said this before, I, I've thrown this out there is that because Steph can still be on any night the best player in the league on any night against anybody, Clay has rebounded with an all-star level second half and performance. Draymond is still a catalyst. Wiggins, we presume, would come back. I'll throw it out there. If they got into the playoffs and got pushed around by a big, um, forget Embiid or Giannis, I'm talking Jokic. They got pushed yeah. around a little bit by a big. They have the arsenal of guards now, especially scoring guards. They're not moving Steph, but Jordan Poole. Um, you know, they've got enough guys they could move. This team, I still believe, believes we got a championship left. Could you see them going out and getting, and I'll throw a big at you. You don't have to, um, he'll give you 22 points a night without designing a single play for him. Anthony Davis. And just say, listen, we know you're not giving us 38 minutes, and we know you're not giving us 82 games. We're not asking that. And and because I look at the Warriors and I think to myself, right now I've lost confidence without Wiggins and Iggy. I don't think I don't think they can get to the NBA Finals. I don't. Now the break is, of course, Marcus KD's out, and you know that's a big thing. And I don't trust the Clippers. Have you, let's start with this. Have you lost confidence in this team going forward, getting to the finals? Yeah, no, no question. Uh, they, they can't win on the road. <laughs> they lose to teams they should beat. I always thought it was going to be tough anyway. Like repeating is not easy. Like it's not, that's right. why a lot, not a lot of teams do it. So even if they brought back the same team, it's not like when they had KD and it was like, all right, we're, we're about to repeat. Like, Normally it gets harder the second year, but now I I think they're uh they'll upset somebody right. That third series though will be tough because whatever they do, it's gonna be on Steph, it's gonna be on Clay, right? It's gonna be on Draymond, and now it's like you you fight through one series, right? You upset somebody, you get another series that's gonna be harder. Now you can start to see it take toll because keep in mind they've been playing hard all year. That was not like 2018, 2019. Right. Where they were chilling, knowing like, all right, we, we're here for a finals run. Like, no, they've been they've been trying to beat teams. So the difficulty I see is they've been putting in a lot of work. And I, on the back end, that catches up. We've seen this before, 2016. They chased 73, you know, got up 3-1, and the legs are gone, right? And that's obviously a, a, a better setting for them, but it's just tough to envision them winning three series to get to the finals and then winning a fourth one. Like that's a lot. I just think they need to have a good showing. And if they knock off Jokic or knock off KD, that's something real. Now you're talking about, all right, Steph's still legit. Who are we keeping out of Draymond and, 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 and Clay? Or maybe Draymond's like, yo, I'm out. I got, I got an opt out. Somebody wants to pay me a max. I'm out. Those are the decisions. Here's, I don't think the reason I don't think they're going to Anthony Davis, the owner wants to go young. That's, that was the whole Wiseman thing. I don't want a bunch of 35 year olds. So when they fall off, we're like a, a, a lottery team again. He doesn't want to do that. He wants somebody young. He wants to swap out Steph and make it a seamless transition to the next guy. So I think he'll want a guy who's young and ready to play. He wanted Steve Kurtz who play the young guys this year. So like he, I don't think he's going thirty plus. He's going, he might go twenty five. That might be the compromise instead of twenty one. Right. It'll be twenty five instead, but it won't be, it won't be another thirty something unless he just decides, let's ride the wheels till they fall off with Steph and them. So um, most have uh, observed and speculated that the Draymond pool punch created a bit of a rift and a chasm between young and old guys in the locker room and they note and i think with some accuracy that it's a bad road team and on the road is yeah. where unity factors in there's almost no explanation marcus for being abysmal shit they're as bad as the rockets and the orlando magic and detroit on the road yes. do you believe it it does it does feel like this is maybe a clickier team uh the, the gap between young and old is sizable 
Oh, I thought that was that was true from the beginning. I mean, it's like literally like a red sea in between them, right? Like <laughs> right. you got the old heads who won championships, and then you have like the homeroom squad, right? <laughs> you got the Hall of Fame, and you got the homeroom. They got six guys who like haven't done much before in the league, and then you have this super high bar of championship standard, right? It was already like that. Uh, I mean, just tangibly just thinking about who they are at their ages, right? Like, I mean, Steph is the nicest guy in the league, right? He gets along with everybody, but he's 35. He's got like kids and stuff. Like he's got IRA accounts and business. Like he's not, he's not hanging out with 21 year olds. Like he'll do, you know, he could put his arm around the guy in the locker room and all that, but he's got teenage daughters. They just don't have anything in common. And I, I you could look in a locker room and you could say, Hmm, this is this is this team looks like they're having a bit of fun. There's some like gelling that you probably didn't think happened after somebody got rocked in, in training camp, right? But what you can't really there's this like un, intangible part of the punch that you can't quantify, right? Like what happens if they don't have that and they get off to a start and the chemistry's great and now they don't lose five straight road games to start the season, like. It's like it's almost like not saving money. You know what I'm saying? You don't lose money, but you don't know you don't know what you would have done if you would have invested it, right? Like so we don't know how that impacted the season. All we know is they got off to a rough start. It was kind of a mess and it felt like it set a tone for the season. So even if they're fine now, right? Even if they're like they've overcome it and gotten through it, there was a cost that they paid that we can kind of see now. And I, and I think it began on the road first out the bat five game road trip. They lose in the Charlotte and Orlando, right? Like, and they're playing like Steph and it's not like they had a bunch of young guys. They weren't able to close against bad teams to start that 0 five road trip set a tone. So I think there is an intangible like cost from that, even if they might've gotten through it in the sense. Well, Steve Kerr played, GM'd, broadcasted, and coached. He's got a lot of money. He's got a lot of interests. It could be surfing. It could be travel. Um, and coaching in this league is a real grind. As this dynasty, I, I don't think it's winding down. I still think it has legs for the next two to three years because I think Steph is, um, you know, I think at some point they could go to Steph and say, listen, we're going to have you play 60 games. That's what you're going to play in the yeah, regular season. Yeah. You pick your spot. I think that's the next step, and that may be – next year um because shooters can last a lot longer than a like a, a westbrook who's a hyper athletic guard and they lose the athleticism not the same guy steph can play for the next five years and hit jumpers the key is 26 minutes 58 Health, yeah. games they're not quite there yet but let me ask you about steve kerr he defended draymond and has before in, in fact it's very interesting to me this year particularly he has been so positive about draymond publicly gone out of his way publicly so much so that i notice where do you think kerr is at with the dynasty himself draymond the age bridge where where is he at when you cover him nightly he seems to be in a place where he like kind of likes the challenge of coaching right like it seems like he likes the the struggle of, of training young guys and teaching them except he don't really play them <laughs> like it's it's kind of weird. When he talks, it sounds like it sounds different than it looks, right? He like he'll say, Oh, this young guy's really developed. I love Moses Moody. Moses Moody, great. And Moses Moody doesn't play. I think the decisions with the roster at the beginning of the year kind of created a chasm that they, they're gonna have to figure out in the offseason. Like here's the other thing is Bob Myers coming back. Bob Myers doesn't have a contract. Right. That's that could be. I mean, we're looking at Draymond is like, what is Draymond going to do? Bob Myers might be the domino that changes things. And then, like you said, Steve's got so many interests. If it gets too different, does Steve stick around? Steve can go right. do whatever he wants. That's one of the things I love about yeah. Steve. Like, he's like, yo, I, I can leave tomorrow. I'll be great. Like, yep. my life is good, right? Like, it's fine. Uh, I've known so, Steve forever. Steve's on a short list of the smartest people that have ever been in this league. He's got a million interests. And it's like, he just has that comfort in his self where it's like where other people are making decisions to keep a job. Steve is like, yo, I'm going to do what I think is best. And if you want to fire me, fire me, but I got 11,000 rings. So I'm good. There, there was definitely a thing between the front office 
and the coaching staff. Like, no, not playing Wiseman, not playing Kaminga, not playing Moody, right? Playing two way guys over him. Like, he seems to enjoy this position of we want, we got to do what's best for us. And I'm just going to coach how I want to coach. It's got to be pretty freeing, but. You know, the owner is like, yo, I'm investing in all these young players. Like, we need to prepare four and five years. So when you talk to him, when you hear him, he sounds like a coach who's kind of, yeah, this is how you build. We're building something. Like, we're growing. But then when you see him, like, coach, he's like, yo, I'm trying to win. <laughs> right. Like, I, like I'm running guys I think can win. But it, it's interesting. He He's so, like, at peace with himself. I think just about everything he does there's a sense of comfort to it, right? Like even, even when you, if you're critical of Steve and he brings it up to you, it's not in a, how could you say that? He's like, yeah, let's talk about it. Sure. You'll be yeah, sure. There's criticism, right? Like I'm going to talk to you about it and it's fine because I already know who I am. Right. So it's good. It's a, it's a, it's a weird space to be in because the owner is like, why aren't you playing Wiseman? <laughs> why aren't you playing Kaminga? And he's like, yeah, I'm trying to win. And I do what I want because I'm Steve Kerr.